Hello everyone, this is Ganesh. I'll be talking about data exfiltration by third-party tracking scripts. This is a collaboration with Steven Engelhardt and Arvind Narayanan. Almost all the websites you visit today embed some trackers, um, including the website you, that you provide sensitive information to, such as your banking credentials or your credit card details. So third-party scripts embedded on these pages may or may not be able to read the, read the page contents depending on how they are embedded. If they are embedded, if the third-party scripts are embedded using iframes, they may be isolated from the rest of the page, so they may not be able to read, for instance, the passwords or credit card information that you provide. However, um, if the scripts are embedded using this script tag, they are not isolated from the rest of the page, meaning they can have full access to the page contents. So in this study, we want to answer this question. Are third parties abusing their privileges to exfiltrate sensitive data? And we want to study these privacy implications of this. And we studied this in the context of three attacks. Hold on exfiltration misuse of browsers built-in login managers and exfiltration of social data we developed a bait technique for this study which consists of injecting sensitive um, user data into the context of real real pages and monitoring access and exfiltration um, of this data by third parties we built this on, on top of OpenWPM by extending its instrumentation. Using this tool that we developed, we crawled home pages and five random inner pages of 50,000 websites. So for, for the three individual measurements, in, in, in total we crawled 900,000 web pages. Uh, code and data for this study is available on this page if you are interested. So the first attack that we study is whole dome exfiltration. So to, to analyze user interactions, what's called session replay scripts uh, collect entire page content or entire DOM and mouse movements and key presses. So the session replay scripts basically record users' browser sessions in such great detail that one like marketing material from one company referred this as if you are looking over the visitor's shoulder. A demo of what these session replay scripts are capable of is um, provided in this in this URL. Um, it's really eye-opening. I would definitely recommend you to watch it and see how a uh, live recording, uh, live visit by a, by a user can be monitored in real time uh, uh, in this dashboard of the station recording uh, uh, website. So the problem with the station recordings or station replay uh, scripts is they require a lot of data to accurately reproduce the user's interactions with the web page on their dashboards. So they require full page source and text, mouse movements, clicks, scrolls, and key presses. So this is how we detected session recording scripts. So this is session, uh, the scripts would read pages uh, source and send it to their service. This is necessary for them to um, reproduce these browsing sessions. So we injected a unique identifier into the DOM so the scripts read this um, the, the page source, in, including our identifier, and would send to their servers. And we basically inspected network traffic and looked for this unique identifier that we injected. However, we found that some third-party scripts, uh, some session recording scripts, compress the data before sending. So basically, they compress the payload because um, the payload is really so big that this is kind of like optimization that they use. Um, to detect such cases, we appended a chunk, data chunk into the DOM and compared 
payload sizes from two visits. So one with the appended, if I'm with the chunk appended, and one without. In addition, we um, collected JavaScript stack traces whenever uh, um, access to page source happened, like access to DOM, and we monitored uh, ad event listener method, uh, calls to ad event listener, to know which scripts listen to mouse and keyboard events. Um, we also collected HTTP requests and response data with the associated uh, stack traces to find out which script initiated a given HTTP request. And when necessary, we did manual analysis and debugging for confirmation. So we found that um, sensitive data, including passwords, credit card details, student data, health data, and purchase details, leaked to these session replay companies. Uh, this was a, uh, almost in all cases, this was an inadvertent collection of this sensitive data. And these are the uh, companies that we found to use uh, whole DOM exfiltration. Most of the companies use that for uh, analytics or advertise, advertising. However, in a few cases, translation libraries also collect whole page uh, source, whole DOM. We found that session replay scripts um, have some automated reduction rules to exclude sensitive data such as passwords or credit card um, numbers from their recordings. Uh, we analyzed how these reduction, reductions work and found that um, they are, um, in many cases, they are very fragile, which is confirmed by our finding that um, in certain cases, such as Propeller Ads website, uh, passwords that you enter into the login form would lead to this session replay company if you use this show password feature. So basically, when you use this show password feature, the automated reduction rule um, will not apply to this element and the password will be scooped up in the recording as we display here. In addition, we found credit card details leaking to session recording companies. Um, in this case, for instance, the, the website uses a markup that the session recording company, uh, company did not have in their automated reduction rules. So again, another example of how these automated reduction rules are fragile and sensitive data ends up in the recordings. Uh, some session recording companies also offer a manual reduction feature that as a publisher, as the website owner, uh, you may exclude certain elements from recordings. However, we found that this is also like a very fail-prone. On Walgreens website, for instance, um, doctor's last name and user's last name is redacted. However, prescribed drug name is leaked to the third party. We found that session replay uh, scripts are very uh, prevalent. Uh, almost 10% of the top million websites include scripts from session replay companies. Um, however, we found uh, evidence of recording on only uh, almost like 8,000 websites. Uh, but this is likely a lower bound because uh, most session replay companies offer um, um, uh, a sampling feature. That is, since the, like a recording takes like so much space. Uh, they allow websites to sample their visitors, only record a sample of their visitors. And by just manually re re reviewing 30 websites, we found several um, like, uh, critical PII leaks that I gave examples of. The second attack we study is um, misuse of browsers, login managers. So this built-in login managers um, help you remember uh, your usernames and passwords and this is the opt-in feature so whenever you register or, or sign up for a website the browser asks whether you want it to remember uh, these credentials or not 
And next time you visit this website, um, it would autofill your credentials, um, the login form. So this is a really like a, uh, in terms of security, great feature to prevent reuse of passwords across websites. However, these login managers um, do not check when autofilling your credentials, they do not check if the form, if forms are visible or not. And they do not require user interaction with the form. And they don't display any visual notification or indication that they autofilled your credentials. Basically, they allow an attack like this. The user goes to a website, signs up for an account, and save the credentials in the browser's login manager. And in a different session, user visits another page on, on this website. This time there is a third party script um, that wants to um, exfiltrate or read and exfiltrate users' credentials. So, so the third party script injects an invisible login form. Browser autocomplete autocompletes users' previously saved credentials. The script reads and exfiltrates user credentials to their server. A demo of this attack is given on this web page, so you may check how your browser behaves and whether it is safe against this attack or not. We use Firefox's NSI Login Manager interface to programmatically add uh, users' credentials for each website that we measured. And we use mutation events, DOM mutation events, to um, uh, monitor insertion of uh, forms, like login forms. And we also monitored reading from form elements, like input fields, for instance. Uh, in addition, of course, like we also monitored HTTP requests and responses, including the post payloads. So we found two scripts using this technique to um, misuse browser login managers to read and exfiltrate users' credentials. Um, the snippets from their scripts are given here. Basically, they do what I described in a few slides back, inserting an invisible login form and expecting the browser to complete it and then reading it. We found that, um, so the first company, EdThink, present on more than a thousand websites, sends the uh, different hashes of the email address to their servers. And in addition, they send the MD5 hash of the email to a data broker, like a major data broker called Axiom. Their script included very interesting and intrusive profile categories, such as hair color, eye color, education, occupation, and insurance state, card risk, and including like a dating status. And the second company called onaudience or behavioralengine.com sends again sends the hash of the email address to their server along with the browser fingerprint. And they were mostly present, this script was mostly present on um, websites with uh, Polish country code top level domain. And the second script uh, was actually in the, if we inspect, like a, when we inspect the marketing materials, we found that they offer uh, billions of user profiles for sale. So the last attack that I'm going to talk about is exfiltration of social data. So many websites offer login with Facebook or other identity providers such as Google or now Apple, and this makes it easy to you know, authenticate users into your website. So the attack we consider here is um, the user allows the first party, the website, to use their social uh, network data to, to log into the website. So basically, the first part of the website receives users maybe public profile and email address, um, explicitly given permission by the user, 
and so it just makes it easy to log in to the to the website. However, if there's a third party embedded in this on this on this uh, uh, website, this third party script may also have access to the Facebook data that is just authorized by the user to the to the first party. And the, the third party scripts may read and exfiltrate this user data to their own servers. To detect such cases, uh, to detect this attack, we basically replicated Facebook SDK surface, especially the scripts, I'm sorry, the functions, the methods that are, that are relevant to logging in and querying of personal information through the Graph API. Again, we monitored function calls, stack traces, and HTTP requests to attribute correctly the attempts to read and exfiltrate uh, this information. We found that seven scripts use Facebook um, Facebook's API, uh, collects Facebook data, and which includes email, username, gender, but most prevalently user ID. So most of the scripts, like five of the seven, were actually, I'm sorry, six of the seven were actually um, requesting the user ID from the SDK. Okay, so this user ID is not a global ID, global Facebook ID, uh, but it's rather uh, uh, scoped to the application or the website. Okay, so it's like local ID. However, at the time of our measurement, there was a way, uh, there was a Facebook interface which you can take this app scoped ID and convert it to the global ID. Okay, and, and in three of the seven cases, actually, three of the seven scripts, we could not verify the sending of this data to their servers. So we could verify that they were reading these identifiers, but um, in I think in all cases they were like heavily, so heavily obfuscated that um, we could not verify the sending of the data. So well, how do these scripts use this data? So four of the seven companies uh, um, uh, advertise themselves as customer data platforms. So they say they help publishers to monetize their users. Uh, Further says they use this identity data to prevent fraud. And Augur is a cross-device uh, uh, tracking company and Natipka is a Russian company offering you know, content monetization and traffic growth. So all these three attacks, actually we now published our findings about these attacks in 2017 and 18. And of course, like when possible, we notify the uh, affected parties before disclosing our, our results. So this gives us an uh, like unusual opportunity to look into the effects of our, of our study, uh, of our, the, this large scaleness of these uh, vulnerabilities. And this is partly helped by the like, press coverage that our preliminary publications received. And we basically compiled this list of um, fixes deployed by browsers, block lists, third parties, and first parties uh, in, our, in our paper. So uh, we are encouraged by the fact that uh, Safari and Brave now require uh, interaction with the form before completing uh, the credentials in their login managers. And Chrome and Firefox are considering similar restrictions. A block list such as easy list, easy privacy, and disconnect edit some of the third parties that we detected in our study. Um, uh, add thing and on audience, the two third parties that, was, uh, that were misusing the browser's login manager, they stopped using this um, uh, technique uh, immediately after we published our uh, findings. And um, we helped Full Story, one of the session recording companies, to fix a bug that was causing passwords to be leaked. Um, Facebook, um, one day after our publication, uh, publication of our preliminary findings, um, they uh, made it impossible to convert these 
uh, app scoped identifiers to global identifiers and uh, uh, smart and yandex two session recording companies they switched to using um, https on their uh, dashboards uh, they were previously using http so like all the session recordings they were not only collected but also displayed over insecure um, urls websites in addition first parties like websites using session recording um, including Walgreens, Bonobos, and GraceSwap, really large-scale, um, like high-traffic websites, they stopped using uh, these session recording companies. So the takeaways from this, um, the response to, to our findings is, uh, although specific vulnerabilities that we report were uh, largely addressed, uh, the root cause of the problem uh, still remain intact that is, uh, the same origin policy isolating scripts from the rest of the pages, like all or nothing, there is no granular access. Um, the tra root trust is kind of assumed to be trans transitive, that is, um, when you trust a web page with your password, you are also implicitly trusting all the third parties loaded on this page. And first parties who may want to actually um, replicate the functionality provided by these uh, third parties uh, really lack resources to do so. Like, it's, it's very difficult for a first party to develop an in-house solution for, say, session uh, replay. So to wrap up, we studied the risks of uh, including third party scripts on web pages on total of 300,000 pages from uh, 50,000 websites. And we found um, highly invasive practices, including um, exfiltrating whole DOM that leak passwords, health conditions, credit card, and student data, um, in inserting uh, invisible login forms to uh, trigger browser login managers and capture user, users' credentials without them knowing, and tapping into social APIs, uh, specifically Facebook APIs, to exfiltrate user, user social networking IDs. Uh, although our preliminary publications helped address specific issues, the root causes of the problems remain unaddressed. So that's, that's all I have. Thank you so much for listening, and I'm happy to take your questions.